Well, good day and welcome to you. It is October the 11th, and I hope wherever you happen to be, you're having a fantastic day. Now, if you're new to Search for Signs, my name is Gary Willing, and here we talk about the emergence of Maitreya and the Masters of Wisdom. If you have listened to a video or two before in the past, hopefully you already knew that. If you didn't, then you weren't paying attention. <laughs> hopefully you'll start by this video by start paying attention in this video. But uh, either, either way, if you're new to this channel or you've listened to a video or two before in the past, I want to welcome you because... Um, I'm glad you're here. Now, I do have a question to cover. And uh, this person asked, I know it's probably on the website you cite, but I'm wondering who was Maitreya in his past life or lives. I'm fascinated about various religious figures and how they were born just like us. All right. Now, the website that this person is referring to is none other than the Sharon International website. Link is in the description of every one of these videos I put up because it's hands down the first place I would recommend anyone to go to to know more about Maitreya, why he's here, his priorities, of course, and some of the background information that you would need to really see if it's true for you. So hopefully you'll take advantage of it. But unfortunately, placeholder, I don't think the answer to your question is on that website. <laughs> because Maitreya became a master millions of years ago, actually halfway through the civilization of Atlantis, and there's not a lot written about what was going on during that time. There's, of course, things in some of the writings here or there. I do recommend, if you want to know more about it, reading Alice Bailey, even Helena Bavatsky, and even some of the writings of Benjamin Krem, you can get a sense of life and what it was during Atlantis, but also, more importantly, what it, what the, the situation in Atlantis and why it ended and how it's pertaining to what's going on to today would be probably a better use of your time in terms of studying uh, the life of Atlantis versus just the romantic view of it that a lot of people have. But it's been said, I'll say this real quick, that eventually, in the not-so-distant future, um, when uh, the masters see that humanity is ready... They will inspire either, whether it's one person or a group of people, to dig somewhere around the Sphinx, and they're going to find a treasure trove of information about life and what it was like and the histor history of, of Atlantis in a way that we don't know today. So in the not-so-distant future, I guess future generations will know a lot more about life and what it was like during Atlantis than we know today. So that being said, there was, you know, if Maitreya was a... Uh, well-known person when he before he became a master there's not anything written about it but I will say this there the only life that Benjamin Krem referenced that was one of Maitreya's earlier incarnations was that of Enoch in that one of the early early uh, Old Testament figures and I was always fascinated by Enoch when I read about him in, in Sunday school and so forth when I was a kid but um and really because he's one of the few biblical figures that didn't die, according to the Bible, that God took, you know, up into heaven. So maybe he was already a master at the time that he was Enoch, I'm assuming. It's just an assumption, but maybe, I don't know. But, um, you know, more would be known about Maitreya through, when he worked through Krishna, uh telepathically, Shankaracharya, some of the other great teachers of the past, but most famously through Jesus and the teachings of Jesus is more in line with who and what Maitreya is and who what he means for humanity. But I do want to say this. Um, I want to read a bit of one of Benjamin Krem's master's articles uh, entitled The Son of Man. Now, this article, along with the other articles written by Benjamin Krem's master, is found on the Sharon National website, and it would be a good use of anyone of your, you guys' time to read uh, one or more of these articles because it gets a sense of the ideas of these masters. But Ben's master wrote about who and what the Christ is and what it means for humanity that we that there's a, there is a Christ on this planet. Now, according to the masters, the, the a Christ, the esoteric view of the Christ is far different from the popular view of the Christ being the only true Son of God. According to the masters, there's no such being in all of cosmos that's the only true son of God. We're all sons of God. But what does it mean that the Christ is here? 
who was the Christ and, and that kind of thing. But according to the Ageless Wisdom teachings, a Christ is a master who not only manifests their divinity, they embody it. And like I said, it's unbelievably rare throughout cosmos to find. You can find it, but it's unbelievably rare. But it's even probably, I don't, I, I would assume if it has happened on a planet of our level, it's, you'd have to go a long way to find it. You know, so it might, this might be the first time it's ever happened, I guess. I don't know. They didn't say that it was the first time, but they said it's just, I mean, unbelievably, unbelievably rare to find a Christ on our level, our planet at this level. You know, and our planet's not very evolved, and that's the reason why. And our planet's actually developed two. The first being the Buddha, and the second being Maitreya. So, putting that into context of what this master is writing about who and what Maitreya is, it might make more sense. But he says, it's sadly to be regretted that such a distorted vision of the Christ should so have permeated human consciousness. No such being exists. In order to understand the true nature of the Christ, it is necessary to see him as one among equal sons of God, each endowed with full divine potential, differing only in the degree of manifestation of that divinity. That he has achieved the fullness of that divinity is his glory, and well may we stand in reverence at this achievement. That this same achievement is rare indeed is also indisputably true. But the wonder of the Christ for men is that he was one of them, not there is in the trials and sufferings of men, but he did know it. Each step of the path that men still tread has he painfully trodden. Nothing is there in the whole panorama of human experience that he has not shared. Thus truly is he the Son of Man. Hopefully that helps and thank you very much. You guys take care. Remember to take action and help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos.